Breaking news. Just as I was ready to release this video on RD Pilot 4.5.0, the RD Pilot dev team has discovered a bug in the Crossfire protocol and that would affect ExpressLRS or Crossfire with uh, RD Pilot 4.5.0. So as of April the 6th, 2024, if you're running Express LRS or Crossfire with the Crossfire protocol, do not install and do not fly or drive or use RD Pilot 4.5.0 in anger. You can use it with anything else, but with Express LRS or Crossfire, wait. And RD Pilot 4.5.1 will be out very quickly, and everything that I'm about to say will apply to 4.5.1. Hey everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome to Plane Time Ardu Pilot 4.5 edition. It's the 3rd of April today as I'm recording this. On the 2nd of April 2024, the Ardu Pilot dev team released the official version 4.5.0 of Ardu Pilot and uh, it's a beauty. There's a lot of good stuff uh, in the new version of RD Pilot. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an update and talk about what I think are the highlights. And I'll put the link in the description, a detailed uh, release set of release notes for all of the RD Pilot versions that have been updated, which pretty much includes almost everything. I'm gonna focus on plane, a little touch on copter, because uh, they're the ones I know most about and uh, call out to everybody on the autopilot dev team who's made such incredible contribution to uh, moving this uh, wonderful open source project forward. I just want to highlight, I made, I think, two contributions to, actually probably three, I suppose, uh, to the new version of autopilot. So what I'm gonna do is uh, talk about overview of uh, key features, of Ardu Pilot overall, key features of Ardu Plane, and a couple of key features of Copter. I'm not really a Copter person, as you know. I've just barely started with my, well, here it is, the Redback Spider. That was my very first Ardu Pilot uh, quadcopter drone. And I also got my uh, baby spider uh, flying with Ardu Pilot 4.5.0 as of yesterday morning. It, would actually, it actually flew with the, the official stable release and, well, as you can see, um, flies pretty nice. So let's get into RD Pilot 4.5.0. Here is my um, checklist of all of the key features of RD Pilot 4.5.0 based on what I think. So uh, first of all, there's a bunch of new a lot of people are coming out with RD Pilot flight controllers. Um, I want to highlight two of them, not saying that they're any necessarily any better just because I happen to know more about them and, and are more interested in them. And you may find if you go and have a look at the release notes that there's other flight controllers that you are very interested in. I'm very, very interested in my uh, Cube Red. Here's a card actually linking to my Cube Red videos. And in particular, the Cube Red has two flight controllers in it and Ethernet capabilities. There's an awful lot of other information here, check out the video. But the point is that everything I did up to now was on pre-release software. It's now officially released, part of 4.5.0. And Chotech uh, that I've worked with um, for some time, their Adept 407 uh, flight controller, is, which is a very cheap and small um, flight controller for small devices and planes, I had put it in my T1 Ranger, uh, is now an official supported version. So that's great. Now here's an interesting one. EKF2 by default has been removed from 4.5.0 and everybody should be using EKF3. EKF3 is um, enhanced Kalman filter uh, capability that basically uh, keeps planes flying um, Simply put, um, there's a lot of uh, advanced mathematics and calculations that happen on an ongoing basis continuously while, while a plane or a quad is flying through the air. EKF2 version 2, EKF3 version 3. Now, that 
EKF3 is a very, very capable and can produce very smooth and very stable flying aircraft in particular. I mean, as you know, I'm mostly focused on planes or planes and drones. EKF2 removed. I just want to make a point about this. I've noticed that with some quad planes uh, that manufacturers have released sort of standard set of parameters that have EKF2 turned on by default, perhaps because, you know, that was what they were used to. Um, maybe they started some time ago and haven't updated. And that will be a problem for 4.5.0 if you're expecting to load a set of parameters, especially a set of PIDs for a particular plane or quadcopter or quad plane in particular, you would um, need to tune for 4.5.0 with EKF3, or you can go to the Artipilot um, build server and do a custom build. Select EKF2 if you want to include it, and as long as your flight controller has enough flash, then you'd be able to include that. But be aware, EKF3 is the standard now for very good reasons. It's way better than EKF2, but if your parameters assume EKF2, they may not work. A number of uh, improvements in this version of Artipilot, both plane and copter for GPS challenged flying. If you don't have a GPS or a GPS fails in flight, for example, by jamming it can happen um, these days more, more than ever, uh, then uh, Artipilot has better handling of that. And that's, I'll leave it at that, but if you care about it, that may be quite important for you. There are an awful lot. There's a huge list of new devices, new device drivers, and uh, without going through the list, I just want to highlight the fact that, you know, Artipilot supports a broader range of, broad array of things like, you know, light, LiDARs and range finders and cameras and gimbals and airspeed sensors, basically too many to go through, but there are just a lot. And there are a number of control and navigation changes that are included in the package. One of the features that I absolutely love, Ethernet. Ethernet's been added to Artipilot 4.5.0, standard out of the box for, um, uh, I think it might be for larger boards. So maybe not be on your one meg boards, but it's definitely a standard on the two meg boards that have the capability. So for large boards that have an Ethernet connector, the, the STM32 H743 processor and the H757 have the capability to have Ethernet. Most boards don't have an Ethernet port, but two that I know of do. One is the Cube Pilot Cube Red. You can see my video about it here. And the other one is the Pixhawk 6X. And I'm assuming that there will be more to come now that the capability is available out of the box from Artipilot. Now, the other way to do networking is PPP, um, which is peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Um, yeah, a really <laughs> obvious name, but the point is that PPP Ethernet networking, so TCP IP networking, over is, can run over serial connections, which is what a UART is. And obviously most flight controllers have a plethora of UARTs, and you can use PPP networking. It's a special option that, need, that isn't installed by default, but is available on the custom build server or if you build the uh, firmware yourself. And PPP networking gives you the full capabilities of the ethernet networking, just basically limited to, you know, whatever your serial networking will support. I've found that on a 8743, like the Zealot 8743 that, um, from Cheotech, that you can get 921 600 board uh, running um, Ethernet over PPP. And then the, the nice thing about that is that then you can put other protocols. You can run Mavlink over the same link. You can run C connection uh, to a C camera over the same link. Uh, there's, a, there's a range of protocols where over one link you can actually multiplex. So that's that's really what the power of this is about. And uh, you can get 960k um, with a, any board that has just a standard four pin UART without flow control. Now, if you've got flow control, uh, and there's a video here from 
Andrew Tridgell, or I think it might be from uh, RD Pilot, but I mean, it's his video that explains how you can get two megabits per second over a serial port if you have hardware flow control. Not all boards support that. Um, something like the uh, Durandal has that option and there are others that do. Uh, I think the, uh, the Q-Pilot, obviously, the, the Q uh, flight controllers do. My Zell H743, unfortunately, just has four pin UART, so it doesn't support hardware flow control, so 960, but it actually, uh, it actually works quite well. So, and, and th th it begs the question, though, the capability to have Ethernet connection to your flight controller or PPP networking, why? Why would you do that? Well, there are so many things that you can do once your flight controller can be connected via Ethernet. And I have a video about that. So check out my video, The Internet of Drones, where I talk about just some of the possibilities of connecting a flight controller via IP to a local device, like a Raspberry Pi, like a NVIDIA Jetson Nano, uh, to uh, and you could run AI devices locally on a, a plane or a device and you can connect to the cloud. Uh, there's a blog post that I'll provide a link to uh, in the description from Andrew Tridgell and a bunch of other contributors that explain and discusses how the whole Ethernet thing works. So you might want to have a look at that if you're interested. So more features of RD Pilot 4.5.0. Can which I really um, am a big fan of CAN. Now it's possible to run multiple protocols over a single CAN uh, connection, which, because there are different um, CAN-based protocols available. So, uh, and in particular, um, there's CANFD support available now, which enables CAN to run uh, much faster than uh, the one megabit per second of standard drone CAN. SD card formatting. So the flight controller can actually format the SD card and it's possible to flash a new firmware from the SD card. So if you're interested in that, that's uh, potentially a great option for um, standardized deployments. For example, you can basically populate a bunch of SD cards, throw them in a set of um, flight controllers, boot them and they will flash with the net latest version of Pilot. There are major improvements, which I won't go through here, but I'm gonna be talking about in some future videos on DDS, which is the protocol used by ROS2, which is the robot operating system, a separate uh, open source development from the, is it the Open Robotics um, Foundation? Uh, and RD Pilot has some capabilities for communicating. It's an alternative to Mavlink for communicating with, in particular, with ROS. So I'm sure there's going to be more coming on this. Right now, it's mostly only available on the bench in Siddle, but uh, it's, it's going to be huge. Let's just leave it at that. All right. There are a, a large number of improvements uh, to camera and gimbal features. There's driver improvements for, in particular, for um, C, uh, Xacti, and View Pro camera and gimbals. And there's a large number of improvements to Lua and scripting. And so uh, I'm a huge fan of Lua scripts. I, I run Lua scripts on almost every plane I build that has the option, which is one of the reasons why I pretty much go with H743 or H7457 flight controllers these days because you need the RAM and the flash to be able to run Lua. So three things that are, I think are really important about Lua scripting improvements. One is uh, fence support, which uh, is uh, a big plus. So there's ability for uh, Lua scripts to um, interpret or uh, interact with the all of the fence API calls. So you can do things in, in Lua with, with uh, geofences. There's networking and Ethernet support, and so that builds on the Ethernet and PPP capabilities that I talked about before. So one good example is that there's a, literally a web server written in Lua script that can run on the flight controller, and you can browse to, and you all here is an example. I have another video about that. You can browse to the web server, do things like uh, check the status, download logs, 
and more to come um, with the capabilities of directly connecting to the flight controller with its web server running on the flight controller itself. Very, very cool. And then lastly, well not lastly, but last thing I wanna highlight, cause there's a bunch of other things as well. Sport Aerobatic Lua had some problems with rudder handling, so that's been improved. Safety. Safety is so important with these planes and drones getting bigger and flying around in the sky. And there's a, a, a huge number of improvements around safety related um, features of and fixes. Watch out for this one. Um, I'm not sure I like it. Uh, there was a pre-arm check that if the motors are emergency stopped, then uh, you'd get a pre-arm and the plane wouldn't arm and that's been disabled. Now, if you have a switch for, um, um, for emergency stop, I quite like to use that switch. I have it set up on my transmitter so that I have my motors emergency stopped unless and until I'm ready to arm. So if I accidentally leave my motor's emergency stop and then arm the plane, it will actually arm now because I have a switch. So I've created my own Lewis script that puts back the pre-arm because I really like to know when my motor's are emergency stopped. And if I have my motor's emergency stopped, I don't want to be able to arm. But that's, that's an important one. Arming options allows suppressing armed and disarmed text messages. So if you you know you're arming, do you really need a message to come up on your ground station to say armed? Okay, maybe, maybe not. Um, if you don't want it, you can turn it off and it's an option, you're not required to. A number of new arming checks um, have been added and there's a list and I'll, a release notes include a detailed list of what they are. And I just wanna highlight Arming checks on your flight controller exist for a reason. Never disable them when you're actually flying the vehicle. You can disable the arming checks on the bench when you're setting up a plane and getting it ready to fly, testing things out with the props off. But you should never disable the arming checks by default. Arming checks should always pass or worst case, if you're out at the field and you're flying and you get one specific arming check that you consciously decide that you're willing to override, you can, well see, you can do disarm the specific check, but you can force arm if you really want to force the plane to arm despite an arming check. You need to know why a plane is giving you a warning. And if you disable the, disable the arming checks, it's not giving you any of those warnings. And if you disable arming checks, you're quite likely to crash your plane and destroy it, uh, smash it into pieces. I have done this, so I know from bitter failure and and I'm telling you now, just don't. Um, don't disable the army checks. There are a lot of them, they exist for a reason and your vehicle should pass all army checks before it's ready to fly. Okay, rant over. Um, there's some object avoidance stuff that's been added. Now the uh, release notes don't say this, but I'm pretty sure it only applies to, to Copter. Um, the object avoidance capabilities with um, Dijkstra and Bendy Ruler in Copter are amazing. I really wish they were in plane uh, and they're not still. A big one is fences. Now this does apply to both Copter and plane. Fences now have an OR option. So you can say that um, you can set up two valid flying areas that don't intersect and you can give an OR. So you can say, if you're inside this flying area or inside this flying area, then you're okay. Because without that, if you're inside one fl flying area that doesn't intersect with another one, then you must be outside this one and you will get a, a failure. So, so this is quite important. So when we look at Arduplane, the key change in Arduplane 4.5 is the change of many of the parameters that were previously in centi degrees and centimeters to degrees and meters. 
the one that kind of triggered this change for me and actually the one that I, where I put my PR in and said, listen, we really need to fix this one was a, a parameter called trim pitch CD. So when a plane flies through the air, it needs to have an angle of attack that's just pointing slightly upwards. I'm exaggerating this, it's, you know, just to show it, but it would actually fly along like that. Typically that angle of attack, which is the angle of the actual plane's attack, would be, you know, three to five degrees. That's probably a good number. Now there's two ways to set up your plane for that. One is when you're cal in autopilot, right? If you're calibrating the, the uh, flight controller, you can calibrate the, the accelerometer so that the, the angle of incidence is slightly up when you calibrate it. So you would actually position it on the bench pointing three degrees up, and then you would start your calibration and, and that would be your initial level level calibration three degrees up and you say because that's how the plane needs to fly you can do it that way and that's fine but not so great for a quad plane look at this okay here a quad plane when it takes off and hovers needs to be exactly level not pitched up five degrees because it, it will have a god awful time maintaining that level it, it doesn't work best for the the propellers that are the, the lift propellers that are trying to lift the plane vertically. So in that case, what you want to do is level the plane or calibrate the plane so it's truly level and then set an option to say when you're flying forwards as a plane, you can set a, a pitch. You can trim the pitch so that it's slightly up and that's what that parameter is. Tr trim, pitch, and CD because for historical reasons uh, that I'm, I really don't know the details of, I just know that, you know, that's, it was a problem before and it sort of had to be that way. Uh, that was in centidegrees, which meant if you wanted to set a trim pitch of three degrees, you would set trim pitch CD to 300. What? 300? 300 centidegrees. Um, which is three degrees. So, uh, and the same thing happened with, with meters. For example, there's um, oh, ITL altitude um, was, was in centimeters. So if you, you wanted to set your altitude for RTL, you would say um, 5,000 centimeters to, to mean 50 meters up in the air. People made mistakes with that, um, you know, setting that correctly, RTL altitude, oh, I'll put it to 50. Guess what? The plane tries to RTL at 50 centimeters off the ground or half a meter. <laughs> You're going to have a problem. Uh, easy to make mistakes and easy to cause crashes. So this needed to be fixed. And so what we've done is, and this was my PR, initial PR, to change trim pitch CD to pitch trim because this is about the pitch you're trimming the pitch so let's put the pitch first it's about pitch and when you do that guess what pitch will show up with all of the other pitch related options pitch trim so it's pitch trim and then instead of cd to make it really clear that we're now using degrees and not centi degrees it's pitch trim deg so you can say pitch trim deg three or 3.5 to be 3.5 degrees up and it will work. So then if the plane as a quad plane hovers into the air and then starts flying as a plane, it will trim the pitch up three degrees if pitch trim deg is set to three. That's what's happening with all of these um, Deg and centi, centi parameters. So here, here's the list of them. So we've got airspeed parameters. I love the fact that these names are now being changed to um, the full word airspeed, uh, and in particular airspeed at the front, and all of the things around airspeed are grouped together. So now you have instead of having 
trim airspeed CM and then airspeed FBW min and max, you now have something really simple. Airspeed min, airspeed max, and airspeed cruise. And they are all in meters per second. You've got uh, cruise alt floor, which used to be called alt hold FBW CM. Yeah, really <laughs> obvious. So cruise alt floor, basically when you're in one of the cruise modes, uh, the altitude floor or the lowest, it will fly in meters. Easy and simple and clear. Land pitch deg, a bit like pitch trim. So this is the degrees of pitch to use when landing is now degrees and not centi degrees. The one that I don't really like is called min ground speed, which replaces min ground gun speed CM. I really wish this had been ground speed min, but it's min ground speed. Uh, it's still an improvement and it's definitely a great thing that it's not in centimeters anymore. So min ground speed is in meters per second. Uh, and then we have several pitch. So uh, along with pitch trim CD, we have pitch limb max deg, pitch limb min deg, uh, pitch trim deg, which is the one we've just been talking about. Um, and then roll limit deg and then RTL altitude, which is the altitude for a return to launch. And that's for plane and the copter one uh, is still alt hold RTL and still in centimeters. So be careful when you're working with copters versus working with planes. And that's parameters. So just to finish off plane, uh, there's some improvements to tuning and to uh, mostly around quad planes uh, and, and to notch filter logging, which helps to, again, to improve quad plane tuning. Takeoff mode, mode uh, fixing a bug, takeoff mode, mode holds down the elevator on tail draggers, which is an interesting, maybe you might call it a bug in uh, the auto takeoff. So I'm planning to try that actually, and I'll hopefully post a video about that soon. And then a huge number of quad plane and VTOL improvements that uh, are too numerous to mention, but if you're interested in quad planes and VTOLs, check it out. Lots of work has been going on in this area. One thing I would highlight is the very recent but um, important change or improvement enhancement to quad planes, uh, and that's to add precision landing for quad planes, which was a capability, a feature of um, copters, but now is available for quad planes as well, which is just awesome. So just quickly to touch on copter and heli, I'm not really the person to talk in detail about that, but you know what? I have my Redback Spider and I'm definitely interested in learning more about this. So I, I did go through the um, release notes for Copter and these are the two that just sort of stuck out for me. Um, fence breaches get checked more often for Copter, which I think is a good thing. And I'm very interested in, uh, in geofencing generally. And so I'll be looking for that. And then, uh, improved copter follow mode at close distances. So, and that's something that I actually plan to mess around with. So I, I'll be um, checking that out. All right, so what did I do as part of our pilot? I just want to highlight, and I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be blah, 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 blowing my own trumpet, but I will do it a little bit. I made, I think, two contributions to, actually probably three, I suppose. Uh, to the new version of Ardu Pilot. The first one is the, uh, the one of the major pieces of the new version of Ardu Pilot 4.5.0 for plane, Ardu Plane, and that is a change in the parameters. So my PR, which updated the parameters from uh, centi degrees to degrees, and as far as I can see, improves the usability and to a certain extent, the safety of Audi Pilot was closed. It wasn't adopted, but what happened was that most of my code was taken forward by Andrew Tridgell and then expanded on and improved and made much more professional and complete to uh, the PR that was actually implemented in Audi Pilot 4.5.0. 
So I, I made my little bit. I think I kicked it off. The second one is a very minor change. Well, apart from the work, the, the help with the uh, parameters, um, I made an actual change, a PR that was accepted and merged in as part of early pilot 4.5.0. The smallest possible change you could imagine, one single character. Uh, the, um, the new Ethernet capability has a flag net enable that it turns it on or it turns it off and defaults to off. So if you had gone there in one of the earlier betas of Ardu Pilot, you would have found that it was net enabled, duh, net enabled, which was pretty much inconsistent with all the other enable parameters that we've got, except for one relating, I think, to parachutes. Uh, in Arduplane at least, they all are enable parameters, not enabled. So um, myself and a, a few other people thought that this um, maybe would be a good one to catch before it gets out into the wild. And I made the PR uh, that changed net enabled to net enable, one single character change and that's committed and that's part of the Arduplane uh, code base now. Uh, and I've been committed. It's actually my second uh, actual code change to Audio Pilot, apart from, you know, I've made a bunch of changes to the wiki, but this is my second code change to Audio Pilot that actually got implemented as part of the Audio Pilot code base. And, you know, I like to help uh, and had my small, 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 one character small uh, opportunity to make a contribution. So, uh, I think that's pretty awesome. I'm kind of proud uh, that I was able to do that as small as it is. And uh, the last one is uh, I make a point of improving, helping to improve the Arduino Pilot Wiki. And this is something that anybody can do really. You, um, you, you often find when asking questions about Arduino Pilot, um, how does it work? You will be directed to the Arduino Pilot Wiki for good reason because it's very comprehensive, complete, and detailed explanation of everything that Arduino Pilot can do. But sometimes there's things missing. Sometimes that hasn't quite caught up with the latest features. Sometimes uh, it's explained maybe in a little too technical detail and is a little hard for uh, some of us to follow. Well, guess what? You can help, and I've done my part. So whenever you find that there's something that needs improvement in the Audio Pilot Wiki. So right up here, looking at this particular web page in the Audio Pilot Wiki, there's an edit on GitHub. So you can go into that button and you can, you get into the GitHub source code and then you can click this button to edit the file. And that will create your own fork. And it does it mostly automatically for most uh, the common changes that you'd want to make. And then you can edit and you can propose changes to the Arty Pilot Wiki and the Arty Pilot dev team and the uh, documentation lead led by Henry, Henry Wurzberg um, are keen to accept good, um, sensible changes to the Arty Pilot Wiki and you can do your part. So I've done several of those. Um, that's my point. So Number one, parameters. Number two, how small can a change be? Number three, several changes to the Arty Pilot Wiki to help uh, everybody, all of us to be able to understand and improve how we, uh, how we use Arty Pilot. So there we have it. That's Arty Pilot 4.5.0, a, uh, a huge um, set of improvements that have been done by a, a, a large number of contributors to the um, Arduino Pilot code base, the Arduino Pilot dev team, and others because it's an open source project like myself, and now available online. I mean, I have gone on with Mission Planner and updated several of my vehicles already with Arduino Pilot 4.5.0 official, and it's there. You can download it. You can go to the custom build server and add in other things like the PPP capabilities if you choose. I just have to congratulate the Arduino Pilot dev team. It's really something uh, you know, on an ongoing basis. They do incredible things with Arduino Pilot itself, the Arduino Pilot uh, open source um, 
autonomous vehicle platform. And uh, this 4.5.0 is just a, another major example of, of what a great uh, job they do. So thanks to the dev, dev team, get out there, download and install Audi Pilot 4.5.0. It's had been through extensive testing. A number of people have been beta, working on the beta tests, testing of this product, again, including myself. And I think you'll find that uh, it's better in any number of ways. Look at the release notes. There's things in there that you will very much appreciate. Tim the Plane Man, over and out.